Hey guys, we'd Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. All right, first I want to go to my X account. I posted this yesterday. This right here, this is amazing. This is up at J Peak, Vermont. It's up to 93 inches now. They've received 93 inches so far for the season. Now, as far as I'm aware, that exceeds all major ski areas across the West in the lower 48 right now. 93 inches up at J Peak. Now, that's quite a contrast to the other post that I put right here. This was a retweet uh, from a repost from this person saying, looking forward to ski season. If you're not familiar, this is Crested Butte. And it is such a sad photo right there. I mean, you've got that one run, all man-made snow. So two very different um, looks right now. You've got Jay Peak with an abundance of snow, and you've got a lot of the West really struggling um, at this point. Here's Radar. We do have some things going on right now. There's a storm system down here to the south, and there's a little bit of energy up here um, to the north, kind of a split flow. Some energy going north, some south. And this is actually going to be the case when you look at the extended forecast uh, as well. I'll explain more about that in a sec. But let me take you down into parts of Arizona. You've got Southern California. So this is where our low pressure is spinning, drawing in this moisture from the south. The movement with this will be towards the east, very slow. So you've got a little bit of snow here over uh, Arizona Snowball, southern Utah, up around Bryan Head. That's going to continue. Uh, one more radar here. So this is the rest of Utah. There's Salt Lake. So this moisture will continue to come up from the south. There is going to be some light snow accumulation a little bit later today, this afternoon, tonight, across the Wasatch, across the High Uintas, but I am not expecting anything big. Um, I mean, when the low is this far away and it's a southern track, that generally benefits southern Utah more than anybody else. And south, uh, western and southwest Colorado as well, we'll get uh, some decent snow out of this in the coming days. All right, let's go to uh, water vapor satellite imagery, give you the big picture here. Uh, so the oranges, reds, the blacks, that's your drier air. The whites, the blues, that's going to be your moist air. So there's our area of low pressure. Again, the track will take it in this direction. Another big low here, and what's going to happen is this is actually going to break into two pieces. There will be a low that kind of breaks off the southern part and dives down and follows the first low, while this piece of energy cruises up to the north. So the split flow will continue in the forecast. Now, one thing I want to point out about this low, when it ends up over here near Albuquerque, it probably continues to spin, and what it may do is grow and intensify. And as it does, it may start to feed moisture with a northeast wind into Denver and across the Front Range and the Eastern Plains. And then we may potentially continue to lift that air up with an upslope flow over the foothills and up to the Continental Divide. So Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park, um, Eldora, Longs Peak, Rocky Mountain National Park could benefit from this between Thursday and Friday. To me, it looks like the upslope is on the weaker side, although I've seen some indications that it may be a little stronger. Um, so there is some accumulation that will occur from this in the foothills and over the higher peaks of Colorado. More on that here in a second, but here are my bullet points. So we've got the first low between today, tomorrow, early into 21, taking the southern track. Pretty obvious. We're going to watch for that setup near Albuquerque to impact Colorado between Thursday and Friday. And then behind it, I pointed out the split flow pattern that's going to be um, dominating the West between the 20th and the 24th with a lot of energy going south and a lot of energy going north. That leaves a pretty good sandwich of drier air and warmer air for a lot of the central Rockies, and I'll show you that as well. But here are your best odds of accumulating snow. Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So for example, in Utah this afternoon tonight, maybe some light snow accumulation across the Wasatch. Heavier down south yeah, around Brian Head. Light on the 20th, another light shot on the 21st. So no big single snowfalls, nothing heavy. Colorado, Late today, tomorrow, into the early on the 21st, light to moderate snow accumulations. There may be some pockets of heavier snow um, in the southern mountains, the sand grays in particular. Um, and then light to moderate coming in on the 23rd with that next storm system. Here's the forecast radar. So you'll be able to see how this really plays out. So we'll start this out at lunchtime today, Wednesday, November 19th. 
Again, there's our area of low pressure. The movement will be in this direction. All right, let me push this into the future. So there's a dinner hour. So this is 5 a.m. on Thursday. Now you can really see how things are playing out. So our low is somewhere in here, and you can already start to see the circulation developing, pushing that moisture with the change in wind direction there into eastern and southeast Colorado. And then there's our, our next band of precip hitting California. All right, there's a the lunch hour. Boy, you can really see it now. Look at this, this east-northeast wind developing, helping to lift the air and force a development of precip. That would likely be rain for Denver. So this will not be the first snow of the season for Denver. There is going to be some snow on the south side of Denver and, of course, to the west at the higher elevations above 6,000, above 6,500 feet, roughly. All right, moving ahead. So there's late so there's late, uh, dinner hour late on Thursday. And I mean, you can really see what's happening with this low, that feed of moisture rotating in, that lifting of the air. Notice a little drier pocket through Summit County. There's the next low already dropping down to the south. So split flow. All right, so here's 5 a.m. on Friday. Low is exiting, leftover precip early on Friday in Colorado. Low spinning in Southern California. There's the lunch hour Friday. There's your dinner hour. And there's 5 a.m. on Saturday. So what do we have left? 5 a.m. on Saturday, November 22nd. Low right here. Low up here. So, so definitely seeing the trajectory to the north, trajectory to the south. Guess what that leaves? Dry sandwich right here. Dry sandwich, unfortunately. Not much happening. Um, let me show you the, uh, this is the time height forecast snow mass ski area in western Colorado Pitkin County. So your time height is a slice through the entire vertical atmosphere. Here's where we start. This is into the future in this direction. So what do I see happening? Well, moisture in green. Moisture is increasing in the atmosphere at a lot of different levels. Uh, the top of the high peaks, ridge lines, up to about 20,000, even some moisture at jet stream level. And all of this is happening late on the 20th through the 21st, and then it's much drier after that. So that's the key time for snow accumulation in Snowmass and a lot of other resorts across the I-70 corridor um, is going to be basically late on the 20th through the 21st. Uh, let's look at atmospheric pressure anomalies. So you're looking at probably middle of the atmosphere up to 18,000 feet. We're looking for highs and lows, essentially. So this is on Thursday the 20th. There's our Albuquerque low that may set up and benefit Colorado with that return flow. There's another drop in pressures behind that and a pretty good dip in the jet right there. Um, this is the 24th, Monday the 24th. Next low, look how far south that one goes. Another low, again, split flow. And guess what? That's the dry sandwich right there. Through a lot of Idaho, Southwest Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, Northern Cal, um, anywhere in that orange color. It's going to be drier. It's going to be warmer. Here's the 27. So you're looking at Thanksgiving right here. It looks like we might have higher than normal pressures across the west. And then you've got your dip in the jet right there with lower than normal pressures sliding across the northern tier and the, uh, the Great Lakes. So if that happens, then most of the West will be high and dry on Thanksgiving. So this is going to be a struggle uh, with many, many places for this Thanksgiving. There's just not a lot of snow in the forecast. All right, total precipitation. This is five-day total precipitation across the West. A couple of things to point out. The key break point, of course, I look for the yellows on this. That's about one inch of liquid. There's not a lot of that, guys, and this, the flow is clearly split. You've got a lot of moisture north of that line, and then you've got moisture kind of going south as well. And again, there is your dry sandwich, your drier sandwich right in here. There's not much there. As far as snowfall, 10 to 1 ratio, 5-day total snow, there it is. Deep purple is at least 6 inches. Bright pink would be a foot. And there's heavy snow up here. I mean, this will be a great period for BC, no doubt. Even the northern, extreme northern Cascades of Washington, um, 
But boy, I'll tell you, there is not a lot of snow. It's probably like one to three inches in the dry sandwich right here. Let me look at the southwest perspective. And um, again, deep purple is at least six inches. So you've got a lot of that across the southern Sierra, southern Utah, northern Arizona, and then southwest Colorado. You've got some bright pinks right on the cusp. So maybe a 12, 12 inch mark there, a 12 inch amount. Um, Again, this is the other storm track, which is down here. Um, here's my specific forecast. Grand total snow through the 24th. Um, again, there's your dry sandwich right here. Not much, very low amounts. Uh, I mean, there just really isn't a whole lot here to begin with, but that definitely stands out to me. Western and Southwest Colorado get the most in that zone. You're looking at anywhere from probably three to six in western Colorado and maybe up to 10 or 12 over the high um, the high San Juans and fives down here for northern New Mexico. I do like what I see up here in the northern Cascades, BC, interior BC, even in parts of Alberta. I mean, we could be looking at some double digit snowfall at higher elevations. I do think there is going to be a rain snow problem um, during the height of this. So the base areas could struggle but I think once you get up mid-mountain and higher, you'll be in much better shape with this type of setup. All right, let's look at the Northeast. No, you know what, let's go to Colorado first. Let's do a zoom in. And I will point out something, and this is grand total snow through 1124. The low will set up down here between Thursday and Friday of this week. And again, it's gonna pull in a pretty good flow. And that should load up the front range in the eastern plains with rain and then snow above 6,000 to 6,500 feet. Now, what that could do, I've got a lot of threes here. Keystone, A Basin, Loveland, Winter Park, Eldora, Winter, or um, Longs Peak, Rocky Mountain National, Indian Peaks. Those numbers could be higher if the storm strengthens and the track is right and enough cold air comes in. Those numbers will go up. Um, could they double from what I have here? Yeah, it's possible with the perfect track they could double. Um, but I'm going to go three. I, I, I'm just, I, I don't know if the upslope is going to be strong enough to double those numbers. And there may be a lull or a low amount right in here through Summit County of one to three inches. And then more across the western slope. I mean, we're not talking a lot here, but certainly maybe up to six to 10, six to 12 over the, uh, the high San Juans. All right, let's go up to the northeast, and I just don't have a whole lot here. I mean, you're looking at five-day total snow accumulation. I mean, if you're really looking under the magnifying lens here, maybe J. Peak and Mount Montrem Blanc get the most at three inches, maybe four, two, three, four. Everybody else's is less, one to two. And that fits my forecast. Again, totals through 1124. I mean, there it is maybe two, three, four inches up there and including Mount Washington, but a lot of zeros on the board through 1124. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this mountain weather update. I appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.